Moon transit in Leo, energy empowerment guidance. A Leo moon's energy is masculine, hot, dry, fiery and barren. Use it whenever you need to put on a show, make a presentation or entertain colleagues or guests. This is a proud yet playful energy that exudes self-confidence and is often associated with romance. This is an excellent time for fundraisers and ceremonies or to be straightforward, frank and honest about something. It is advisable not to put yourself in a position of needing public approval or where you might have to cope with unhandiness, underhandedness, as trouble in these areas can bring out the worst Leo traits. There is a tendency in this sign to become arrogant or self-centred. Its ruler is the sun, impulse I am, and it rules the heart and upper back. Its symbol is the lion and its quality is fixed. We're also going to give a bit of information on the moon phases today. Moon phases, and this one's related to if you're gardening by the moon. Moon phases. The theory behind gardening by the moon is, as the moon goes, so goes the garden. The earth circles around the sun once a year, but the moon has a much shorter lifespan of 28 to 30 days. Every month, as the light of the moon increases and decreases, it mirrors the cycle of birth, growth and death in the garden. After adjusting your garden activities to the light of the moon, you'll be amazed to see how well your garden grows. So we're currently in the fourth phase. It go, it's a new moon on Thursday, so in like four or five days. Um, and it's called the waning phase that we're in. But I'm just going to describe to you the waxing phase, seeing as we're talking about the phases. The waxing phase is the growth cycle in the garden. It begins with the new moon and lasts for two weeks. Each month, the moon is born at the new moon, day one, and grows bigger and brighter until it reaches maturity at the full moon, day 14. When the light of the moon is increasing, it's the best time of the month to sow seeds, plant leafy annuals and cut back or prune plants to encourage bigger growth. So the waning phase, the phase we're in at the moment... And I'm just going to put up a card for this, actually, because this is the phase we're in at the moment, the waning crescent for release. The waning phase is the declining cycle in the garden. It begins like the moon, because we've gone from the full moon now and we're getting smaller to the new moon. It begins with the full moon, day 14, and lasts for two weeks. The moon grows older after the full moon as the light begins to decrease until it disappears or dies at day 28. The decreasing light of the moon is the time to plant bulbs, root vegetables and perennials that sort their energy underground, that store their energy underground. The waning moon phase is also a good time for garden maintenance including weeding, raking, deadheading, mowing, working the soil, destroying insects and burning brush. How can you tell if the moon is waxing or waning? Cup your right hand into a C shape and look up into the sky. If the crescent moon fits into the closed part of your right hand, it's a waxing moon. 
cup your left hand into a C shape and look up into the sky. If the crescent moon fits the closest part of your left hand, it's a waning moon. So it's the latter one at the moment. So if you cup your left hand into a C shape and at the moment it will give you the waning moon. So I'll read that again because this is the one that we're in. Cup your left hand into a C shape and look up into the sky. If the crescent moon fits into the closed part of your left hand, it's a waning moon. Now I'm just going to read you a little bit of information from Luna Living, Kirsty Gallagher's book. And she's got a moon group that she does called Lunar Living, which you can join if you are into doing self-empowerment and self-growth and need some support and guidance for it. And it helps you get to understand the energies. So this is from her book that she's written. Transform your life with the phases of the moon. Trust in the moon. She whispers, we'll be there soon. Guided by waves by Ash Radford. Working with moon phases means that every month we have at least two opportunities to check in and see where we are in our lives, to create things that need to be created and release all that is standing in our way. <coughs> and the word here is release. Journeying with the moon through her cycles helps us to work through similar cycles in our own lives. Using the moon's energies to release and let go allows us to create the space for new beginnings and amazing opportunities, ensuring that we continue to grow and move forward rather than staying stuck in the past. Working with the moon and her ever-changing phases also helps us to not fear change in life as we come to see that everything is part of the same beautiful cycle and that each part isn't as necessary as the last. We have to allow ourselves into darkness and surrender to be able to achieve fullness and light. It's imperative that we play an active part in our own lives, that we hold ourselves accountable and take back our power. The moon gives us the tools we need. Rather than waiting or leaving things to fate, or being thrown around by our emotions or life circumstances, or staying in the wrong job, relationship or situation for way too long, we can use these monthly opportunities and the magical energies of the moon to take back control of our lives and create real change, transformation and growth. Take a deep, moonlight-filled breath and sigh and shake it out. One of the simplest ways I find to explain the cycles effects and energies of the moon throughout the month is by likening it to the breath. Sit back, close your eyes and take a big, full, deep breath in. Pause for a moment at the top of the inhale and then take a big, full, deep breath out. And pause for a moment at the bottom of the exhale. Take another deep breath in. Pause. Then another deep breath out. And pause. Repeat this a few times and really tune into and experience the cycle of the breath and how each phase makes you feel. The dark moon is the lowest energetic part of the lunar cycle and is just like the very bottom of your exhale, an empty space. Here, you feel as though you want to close your eyes and retreat inwards, be quiet and still. Even the body seems to close in and sink down as everything draws inwards into this empty space. And that's why the card um, for the dark moon is called the void. There is no energy for anything but simply being in that void and pausing, listening, resting. 
as you begin to inhale like the waxing moon. You feel an influx of energy. It's as though you literally begin to breathe life back into yourself. Your energy starts to return and along with it your inspiration and drive to go out there into the world and make things happen. The full moon is the very top of your inhale. There is a sense of completion and fullness and everything feels alive and possible. Your whole being feels expansive, open and receptive. It's as though everything suddenly becomes clear. As you exhale, like the waning moon, there is a feeling of release, surrender, letting go. As you get closer to the end of your exhale, everything seems to get more inwardly focused and quiet and small, returning back into the void. Imagine for a moment what would happen if you remained at a certain part of the breath cycle for a long period of time. What would that, that feel like? Imagine always being at the top of your inhale, filled to bursting, hyper-anxious, overly energised, or, conversely, at the very bottom of your exhale, flat, lifeless, empty. This is at times how we live our lives, holding on, fearing change, getting stuck and allowing situations, expectations, fears, even other people to control and overwhelm us or keep us small and empty. Working with the cycles of the moon means that you will no longer allow this to happen. You will instead become so much more self-aware and keep yourself and your life in a constant flow. So... With a deep breath in and out. <sighs> Let's look at the phases and how we can work with them in a little more detail. Ebb and flow. Wax and wane. The moon is the feminine energy that connects us to our inner worlds, our emotions, our intuition, dreams and the cool of our souls. Every month she phases from dark to new, waxing to full, waning back to dark, and as she does, she takes us with her on her powerful inner journey. Each of the moon's phases brings its own opportunities and magic and takes us into different areas of our inner worlds to work with. The two main phases many of us will generally work with and weave magic with are the new and full moon. The new moon is the time for renewal, new beginnings and starting over. The full moon is the time of completion, illumination and letting go. As the moon moves between her phases, she also waxes and wanes. The word waxing means growing or expanding, and it's during this phase that our energy grows with the moon. This is the creative part of the cycle. The word waning means a shrinking or decreasing, and this is the releasing part of the cycle, as our energy levels get lower and more inward focused. In addition, the crescent phases are when the moon is less than half illuminated. The quarter moons are when we see half of the moon illuminated. The gibbous phases are when the moon is more than half illuminated. As you begin to weave your own ma moon magic, you may wish to work with all these phases, or just simply with the magic of the full and new moons. Understanding how the different cycles affect you energetically is really useful, and will further help you to work with and understand your own rhythms. It is certainly worth a check-in at each turning point of the cycle to make sure that you are moving in the direction you wish to head in, and not straying too far off course. If you find yourself feeling particularly emotional, lost or coming up against any sticking points. Check which phase the moon is in as this will give you more insight into why this could be happening. And help you to work with rather than against whatever is going on. You can also, so it's like, you know, if you've got, um, if you're 
out at sea and you're swimming and you get caught in a tide rip, you don't swim against the tide current, you swim with the current or across the current, otherwise you get too exhausted. So it's a similar principle. You can also find which sign the moon is in at each phase and read up on that particular sign in part two. The moon in each zodiac sign to add a little extra moon magic and we are going to read the Leo moon in a minute from that part. Under each moon phase I have given you some action points and reflections from the moon. Use these as journal prompts. Write them at the top of the page and simply write what comes to you, allowing the wisdom and guidance of this moon to reflect back to you answers from within. And it actually does have in this book more information on journaling as well, so it is a good, great book to buy. The eight phases of the moon. There are eight official moon phases. I have started with the dark moon as this is the end that creates a beginning and sets the tone for the rest of the lunar month ahead. As we've learned, the phases of the moon are not exact and so cannot be divided into equal parts. I've tried to simplify the phases on the opposite page, but as a reference point, the moon spends around three and a half days in each phase. If you want to delve into working with each phase, you can use an online moon calendar for the exact days when the moon changes phase. Note, there is a slight difference in the terminology used by astronomers and astrologers to describe some moon phases. I have used the astrological terms here. 1. The dark or balsamic moon. The dark moon begins 10 to 11 days after the full moon and takes us to the new moon. The new moon is the start of the lunar cycle and lasts around three days. It's two weeks to the full moon from here. The waxing crescent moon begins three days after the new moon and lasts around four days. The first quarter moon begins seven days after the new moon and lasts around four days. It's about a week until the full moon from here. Waxing gibbous moon. The waxing gibbous moon begins 10 to 11 days after the new moon and takes us up to the full moon. The full moon arrives approximately 14 to 15 days after the new moon and lasts three days. It is two weeks to the new moon from here. 7. Waning gibbous moon. The disseminating moon begins three to four days after the full moon and lasts around three days. And this is the one that we're in, number eight, waning last quarter. The last quarter moon begins around seven days after the full moon and lasts four days. It's about a week to the new moon from here. So we're about halfway through that um, because it's five days, four or five days. It's, um, and it's Thursday. So it's four days until the new moon, not including today. So I'm just going to look at that one in a little more detail. The phase eight. She does describe them all, but we're not going into them all now. Eight, waning last quarter. The moon is halfway towards new during the waning last quarter. And as the name suggests, we're three quarters of the way through the lunar cycle. As the moon wanes and gets smaller, her energy is encouraging and supporting you to surrender and let go. Let go. Let go. Just as she is doing. The moon shows, in perfect simplicity, the, that the only way to make room for new beginnings is by letting go of all that holds you back. There may be a feeling of uneasiness around this phase of the lunar cycle as you feel change coming and perhaps a sense of things slipping away. Drawing upon what you have learned from the cycle so far, this phase is where you do the real work of releasing, what does not help or serve you in any way. This is really important. As otherwise, it will come up again during the next cycle. Remember that some things may take a while to release, just as they take time to manifest. But the more times you become aware of them and learn to surrender, the more overall change you make. This applies to the inner work around your self-doubt and self-belief, outdated narratives and stories and fears. Also, the outer work of shedding the situations, people, 
environments, setting boundaries and getting clear on when to say yes and no in future. Affirmations, mirror work and journaling can all be powerful here. At this crossroads in the cycle where the moon is once again half lit in the sky, look back over your journey so far and forward to where you still want to go. Give a last push to wrapping things up and making any necessary changes. Do all the things you have been putting off. Get organised and prioritise as this is a halfway point between the full and new moon. You may find things finally coming together or that problems, mistakes or whatever you have been avoiding catch up with you now. This is a pivotal moment in the cycle. Take responsibility, face up to things and, if necessary, decide to let go of certain things for good or find a new approach towards your goals and dreams that you can implement during the next lunar cycle. Your energy will begin to get quieter and more inwardly directed, your intuition stronger and your tolerance for dealing with anything that is not right for you will become much less as you make your way once again to the dark moon phase and the cycle begins all over again. Under the waning last quarter moon, make a last effort to finish things off, wrap things up and do what you have been putting off. Take inspiration from the moon and do daily work around letting go. Take responsibility, face up to things and make decisions for your future. Reflections for the waning last quarter moon. What do I need to finish up, complete or end? What decisions do I need to make about my future? What am I not ready to release just yet? So I'm just going to read this card to you as well. From the Queen of Mor Moon Oracle cards. 27 waning crescent four, release, let it go. It is time to release anything that does not serve you. Old negative habits do not engage you any more as the payoff is not enough. You are ready to make room for bigger, brighter, more aligned things. I freely release what I no longer need. So you may want to repeat and say at the same time as an affirmation. I freely release what I no longer need. I freely release what I no longer need. There is a payoff if we decide to finally release something we no longer need. The payoff is as individual as you are, but there will be a universal feeling of making space for something new. The secret to effectively releasing what no longer serves you is, in fact, knowing that the payoff will indeed be worth it, which makes it super important to know that what that positive payoff may what that positive which makes it super important to know what that positive payoff may be. For example, giving up a habit such as smoking, which we know is detrimental to our body in that it is cancer-causing, among many other nasty things, has payoffs. What the most important payoff is for you may be different for someone else who is giving up the habit. But it needs to be clear in your mind, to your mind, body and spirit. You might give up so that your body feels healthier generally. Or so that your children and those around you aren't exposed to the smoke and chemicals that you live longer or that all that money you are wasting on cigarettes could be used for something that is more in line with what you really want, such, such as travel or a home. All of which are real payoffs for which it is worth releasing the habit. In magic, in particular in spellcraft, the art of release after raising power is vital to its effectiveness. Should we raise power without sending it out to the universe or deities in a focused way? It remains stagnant or stuck. This can cause us to feel overwhelmed. The companion stone is smoky quartz. And then tomorrow... ...is peace. The waning crescent five, the last one before we go into the dark moon. Peace of mind is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves. 
refuse drama and do not freely engage with people who use drama as a weapon. Stop fighting, allow yourself to rest for a while. When we let what we no longer need go, we make room for peace. And the affirmation, I choose to create and hold peace. I allow this to ripple out into the world. I choose to create and hold peace. I allow this to ripple out into the world. We are an anxious bunch, us modern folk. We are constantly stimulated or not stimulated enough. We find it hard to sleep. Insomnia is at record levels in the Western world. And for some, we self-medicate with food, devices, drama and work. We seek peace, but we don't know how to go about it particularly well. Peace can begin with a series of decisions we make. For example, we can decide we can't control everything. Shock! The ancient Greek Stoics had a great strategy here, advising a split of your issues into, I can control this, and I have no control over this. Think about the most pressing and worrying issues you have right now, or the situations that are giving you the most sleepless nights. Then, break them down into pieces and place them under the correct heading. Be honest and discerning. What will you find? What you find will what you will find is that most of your situations or issues are under the second heading. The Stoics advise that the things listed there deserve no more of your attention because they are actually out of your control. <laughs> wow! However, the things under I can control this are important and you must action these to the best of your ability. These are those things you will influence and where you will glean the most change. While this seems a simple system, I promise you it will give you far less to worry about and instantly more peace. We can be more focused and mindful about what we are doing in real time. We can place ourselves deliberately in sessions, in quiet, beautiful and peaceful environments. We can learn what for us brings out our body. We can learn what for us brings our body rest and peace. We can choose not to do the head miles of worry. Worry is, after all, chewing gum for the mind. Not really nu nutritious in any way, but something to do. When we let go of what we no longer really need, peace floods in, taking up this old space and healing it. And the companion stone for this is amethyst. Not sure where the smoky quartz is, but here's some amethyst. Okay, so the card we had pulled for the moon transit in Leo is the free of earth. So I will just read Leo to you from the Lunar Living book. The moon in Leo, the moon to feel liberated. It's a fire element, a fixed quality, and the ruling planet is the sun, and the symbol is the lion. A Leo moon often brings with it a little glimmer of light and hope, a feeling of relief, and possibly even a newfound confidence. My moon amusings. Leo's ruling planet is the sun, and Leo is the fiery sign that rules the heart, meaning this moon helps you to realise the unique gifts to the universe that radiate from your heart only. Leo wants you to become completely and utterly your most authentic self, to feel liberated and fiercely share your one-off self out into the world. Playful Leo helps to override all those adult responsibilities which often make your dreams and desires feel like a pipe dreams. Instead, Leo is like an excitable child, joyful and inspired by just about anything and everything. Leo tells us that life is an adventure and, most of all, 
that it should be fun. So often adulting puts our biggest desires and passions on the back burner. Life, responsibilities, to-do lists, ifs, buts and maybes all get in the way and life can become monotonous. Leo wants to know what you would do in this moment if real life wasn't in the way. Beneath all the layers and labels, who are you really and what do you desire? Deep down in your heart. Leo wants you to find freedom in self-expression and creativity, to liberate yourself from any captivity in your life and to release your inner king of the jungle, so as to rule your heart and inner domain from a place of love and freedom. Of course, we have a certain level of responsibility in life, but the moon in Leo calls for you to put yourself first, a bit more, to notice how you possibly sacrifice yourself by putting the needs, happiness and goals of others before your own. This moon is here to ignite your heart, boost your self-belief, lift your spirits and let your soul soar. With Leo energy, you will find the power to break free of the internal beliefs and bonds that block your dreams. One thing that Leo does demand though, is that you take complete responsibility for your own life, your actions and everything that has brought you to this moment. A Leo Moon reminds you of, uh, of your power. In each moment, you have a choice and whether you make those choices consciously or not, you are always choosing the way your life is heading. You need to stop blaming misfortunes on others. Taking back the power and responsibility puts you in control and gives you back leadership in your life. This moon is a call to action. As you begin to show up more for yourself, life will start to show up more for you. As the ruler of the heart, Leo wants you to be able to live fully and completely in and from your heart. But in order to access it, you have to remove all that keeps it closed, protected and shut. When you close off your heart, you close off your wisdom and ability to feel and to know. That deep inner knowing, that deep inner knowing, that deep inner knowing which can guide your life if you choose to follow its whispers. In order to help you to access the full capacity of your beautiful, wise, loving heart, this moon often brings up all that remains raw and unresolved, so that you can become aware of it to heal it. As this healing happens, you may find that under this moon you get perfect clarity in your heart that you have outgrown people, situations, jobs and beliefs. As the king of the jungle starts to stir within you, opening your heart, you will begin to truly step into your power and realise and release anything that does not align with your grand future Leo vision for yourself. So that's your Leo moon in the fourth phase, fourth phase, the waxing crescent four. So the Leo moon calls you into thinking big, acting bold and living from your heart. The Leo moon energy allows you that deep, allows you that deep delve into your heart to get to know, love and trust yourself on a very deep intuitive level. The truth of your entire being, all that's come before, all that's possible and yet to come, and all that you are capable capable of, will be shown to you if you allow the courage, courageous lion to lead you in deep into your heart. The sun rules, Leo. The sun is the giver of life and light and power. You only have to look around at how much more happy, energised and alive everyone is when the sun shines to know that. The sun is associated with the solar plexus chakra, your own personal inner sunshine. This bright yellow glowing ball of inner sunshine is your centre of power, energy, will and achievement. This is the place from which you manifest and magnetise towards you all that you want to create in the world. Use the energy of Leo and the sun to make yourself mag magnetic to all that you desire and to shine your light out into the world. Now that's the sun that rules Leo, um, but we're actually, the sun is in Virgo at the moment, 
So there's real nice pattern overlaps between the energies of Leo and Virgo at the moment as we are coming into the Virgo new moon on Thursday and we are in the sun of Virgo at the moment. So now we'll go to the dreams of Gaia. So this was the card that was given us to the for the moon in transit Leo, in Leo transit so if this was so this is the the spectrum of the middle so the top of the pack spectrum the conscious the seen the aware if you are someone that is aware in your conscious mind is 11 individuality together equaling two patience and choices and balance and it's healing and the Virgo and sign is all about healing. And the Leo energies that we're in at the moment is about the empowering yourself to take self-management and accountability and responsibility for your own healing. Key words, healing, release, purification, forgiveness, transformation, infection. Key phrases, to be human is to be wounded. A time to connect body, mind, spirit and soul. Let go of definitions and labels. Nurture passions and seek pleasure. Authenticity, honesty and laughter find the source of disease and distress. You need to forgive. Do what's necessary to increase well-being. Do not dwell on the unchangeable past. Shift your attention. Do not allow your pain to hurt others. Seek treatment. Do not be afraid. And the bottom of the pack, the subconscious, the unse generally unseen and unaware, but the reason for the real deep reason for why things are happening. So generally, we tend to lie to ourselves to make us be okay. But the real reasons of why things happen lie deep within the subconscious psyche. So it's like an iceberg. The biggest part of the iceberg is underneath the sea that you cannot see. And we had this come out in the Moon in Taurus transit, and I've left the link below for you to go back and check out the energies of that one. Two, the two are fire. Keywords, power sharing, mentorship, partnerships, equality, teamwork, mutual interests, ambition, control. Now, I do these as internal readings, so when it says partnerships and mentorships, it's about that, again, self-accountability, self-responsibility, self-management, leaving the blame mentality behind you. And so partnership to me means balancing out your yin and yang energies, your masculine and feminine energies. Now, what I correlate that to is your left vagus nerve, the rest and digest vagus nerve and the right vagus nerve, the fight, flight, freeze vagus nerve. So you may want to Google vagus nerve and do some um, research on that. But gargling water, chanting, singing, shaking, there's lots of things that you can do to stimulate, stimulate your vagus nerves. And it's the 10th cranial nerve. Key phrases for this, align yourself with another or align your vagus nerves together, align your internal body with your external body. Change the patterning of your habits in your physical body and your posture. Clean your teeth with your opposite hand, open the door of your opposite hand. A power sharing situation, two heads are better than one. So for me that means using your left and right hemisphere brain. So if you're someone that's more in your left logical brain, step into your right brain a bit more and start doing things that are um, stimulate your right brain and if you're more in your right brain hemisphere step into your left brain a bit more and do things that stimulate your left brain a time for teamwork and cooperation a struggle for power seek one who will teach much needed skills an equal exchange of energy someone who will help you overcome obstacles so those are the energy spectrums that we're working in and this is the card that was given, and it's beautiful. The flowers are purple, crown chakra, yellow, third chakra, solar plexus, where your ribs are. That's what guides you to your ability to um, how you control and use your breath. And pink flowers, your higher heart. And there's a squirrel and some acorns. The oak trees, a big healer, one of very powerful ancient wisdom. And the schools, the squirrel 
is very good at um, storing and preparing for the future, which is what Virgo in Sun is all about. Um, and that's the sun sign that we're in at the moment. It's the harvest time, prepping your food for the winter. Um, he's got cute little devil horns again. And there's a lot of green again, which is your lower heart chakra, your heart chakra. Your higher heart is related to your thymus, um, which is literally just above your higher heart. So if you kind of tap on that and do circles, especially if you t you can't get to sleep at night, and that's what rig riv uh, that's what regulates your internal rhythms and cycles. Um, so it's a very pretty card. He's got. Well, I'm admiring his collarbone in that card, and he's looking to the earth. So it's a time for grounding, making sure that we're grounded. We get enough time out in nature um, as the season transits from summer into autumn. Because if we're not... Apologies there, my alarm went off. If we're not fully balanced in... Um, what was he saying about the the shifting from the summer energies into the autumn energies, getting ready for winter? If we haven't um recharged our own batteries enough with the sun and being in nature and being outside then the darker times of winter that are coming feel a lot more gloomy and can take us to unpleasant places in our psyche so if you haven't been embracing nature and the sun and water as much as you can um maybe that's something that you want to do before the winter comes if you are someone that suffers um seasonal affective disorder sad the three of earth, keywords, ambition, sowing seeds, groundwork, energy investment, sacrifice, fertility, outcomes, key phrases, time to make preparations, risking future goals and ambitions, investment, sacrifice equals reward, a time of restriction or adversity, increased opportunity, People notice commitment and dedication. Be sure of your motives. Maintain intimacy and connection. The three of earth represents a time of preparation. It is a time to sow the seeds born of thought, need and desire in fertile soil and to do what is required in order to make those seeds grow. It is a time for you to do the necessary groundwork. Remember, the outcome can only be equal to the investment you are willing to make in the here and now. The three of earth can also symbolise a time of sacrifice in the weeks and months ahead. There may be choices offered that appear as limitations or restrictions. While these choices might bring about feelings of reluctance, frustration and annoyance, put them aside and focus on what the end result will bring. The future may also offer moments of adversity and hardship that make you want to give up. If you find your resolve challenged over the weeks and months ahead, know that all that you hope to achieve is dependent upon your willingness to make a commitment now and then honour that commitment to the end. Do so knowing it will be noticed and respected. It may even increase the opportunities that come your way, whether it be further education, new work responsibilities, saving for a new home or building a business. Now is the time to look for realistic grounded options and to then get in touch with those who have the knowledge and information you require in order to determine if your objectives can be achieved and the best course of action for you to take. The Three of Earth asks, what are you willing to do now in order to achieve the outcome you desire? Potential Blockage The reversed Three of Earth asks that you be sure of your motives, as they will be play a defining role in the outcome that manifests. For instance, if your goal to be successful and powerful is based on a need to feel you are of a higher standing than others, you will quite likely be knocked from your pe pedestal. 
If your desire is to possess and control, you may well be met with loss and chaos instead. Keep in mind that in all things you will reap what you sow. If you want instant gratification, you may find you are met with disappointment. If you spend all of your time worrying and second-guessing yourself, you may find yourself making more mistakes. The three of earth reversed also cautions against becoming so focused on your goals that you forget to consider the emotional needs of those around you and give the appearance of being insensitive and selfish. Do not create distance between yourself and those you love. Intimacy and connection are essential, especially if those you love are the reason you seek to better yourself and your future prospects. Namaste.